What's up, guys? Terrence here from Retro DNA. And Who the fuck is that guy? Who the fuck is that? Today's episode is all about the light gun, light gun, light gun experience. Pew, 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 pew. So there's one thing I tell people whenever they say they want to have a home arcade or they really want to get into retro gaming, I tell them, look, it's an absolute must that you have some type of light gun game experience because if you're like me, when you think back to being young in the arcades, there's nothing that compares to standing in front of that screen with a gun and shooting some zombies or some criminals or some really bad actors. It all really just depends on what your preferred game was. And thanks to the Nintendo Wii, it's not only super affordable, but it's super easy to do for just about anyone. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over some of the top Wii light gun games that are out there and we're gonna talk about this sweet house of the dead light gun cabinet and how you can make one for yourself. Coming up on Retro DNA. What's up guys, I've got a confession to make to you right now. I love shooting zombies right in the middle of the head. It's one of my favorite things to do, and even more than that, I love shooting people, like just criminals. Like, you're out there kidnapping people, holding hostages. You deserve for me to blow your brains out on the screen. Of course, <laughs> I'm here to talk to you about light gun games and how you can bring the experience home with you. And these days, it's really super duper cheap. See, a lot of people know about the Nintendo Wii, of course, and they know it's a cheap system, ultimately. And the fact of the matter is not many people are that interested in it, but light guns are the sole reason that you should own this. If you don't have a Nintendo Wii, you can literally pick one up for like 20 to 30 bucks at your Goodwill or Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist or something like that. Pick up a couple, you know, cheap uh, gun holders. You can get some basic Wiimote gun holders for somewhere in the neighborhood of like 10 to 15 bucks even on places like eBay and Amazon, just all depending on what you go with. Um, the fact of the matter is it's an experience unlike any other and you can bring it home not only can you do it on your TV or what have you but you could also go the extra mile and build a pretty freaking sweet arcade cabinet using your light guns now the best way to do it in my opinion there of course is using the Nintendo Wii as well even though there are emulation options stuff you could do with aim track and all that but let's face it the average person isn't technically savvy enough to do all of that so let's go over this sweet house of the dead cabinet. But before we do, let's talk about the obvious game of the day. I'm going to rip your motherfucking bones. This episode's game of the day is House of the Dead Overkill. If you're a fan of House of the Dead, which you are if you're a fan of shooters, let's be honest, House of the Dead is one of the most well-known ones out there. House of the Dead Overkill was an excellent fit for a number of systems, but also specifically for the Nintendo Wii. This one's a little bit different than some of the other ones in the fact that it's a little bit more on the adult side. Some of the language and the references are pretty, you know, sexual and aggressive and that type of thing. And, uh, you know, so it may not be ideal for your younger kids. And in that event, if you want them to play House of the Dead, I would recommend 2 or 3, which is also available on the Wii. Um, but, you know, to me, it's got a good storyline. It's a good level of playability. It's not too difficult. I think 2 is really challenging for a lot of people, whereas 3 is easier. Overkill, I think, is just kind of right there in the middle in the sweet spot. It's an easy game to play. Plus, it has some cool uh, quick games that you can play. Uh, kind of brief rounds where you can shoot at targets or shoot at zombies in a single room that kind of come in in different waves and things like that. So definitely worth checking out if you haven't checked it out. We'll go over that here in a second when we cover the rest of the Wii shooting games that are out there. All right, guys, I'm going to cover this pretty quickly. This House of the Dead cabinet is a custom mod made from an arcade one-up machine. This was originally a Galaga machine. I put in the lit marquee at the top. Not the biggest fan of the borders uh, on that, by the way, but it comes from ArcadeModUp.com. It's a great product overall. Got the liftoff control panel. Uh, it was custom cut. I just went out to the woodshed and cut it. As you can see, we open it up. Nintendo Wii. You load your game in there. Store the case there like that. You got your amp. Control your bass and your treble. I actually got really good sound on this thing. And that's because of these two 4-inch Boss speakers here on the front. They actually have skulls on them, as you can see, which fits perfectly and the lights 
in the eyes illuminate whenever the music is loud. I have to turn it up to show you, but outside of that, it's just got the custom wrap, uh, House of the Dead theme on the riser, and of course the rest of the cabinet. This thing is absolutely beautiful. Got those graphics from arcadegraphics.com and um, put the 20 inch monitor in as well. Used the Tulsa Arcades kit for that monitor, but that's just a Dell 2007 FP monitor. Uh, I did tape it up real good on the backside to prevent backside, excuse me, to prevent light leak. And then I just used the original Wii cable, the red, white, and yellow. Ran the yellow to the screen and the white and uh, red to the amp, and uh, she was good to go. So really easy mod, guys. The most difficult part of this was cutting plexi, but outside of that, she's good to go. Got the uh, wireless receiver. As you can see, I just set it there when I'm playing, but I put a piece of Velcro on the bottom, stick it on the top when I'm done. Dun, dun. This episode's beer of the day is Voodoo Ranger IPA by New Belgium. This is a brewery out of Fort Collins, Colorado, and I believe Asheville, North Carolina. And then I'm gonna read the description where it says, Bursting with tropical aromas and juicy fruit flavors from the mosaic and amarillo hops, this golden IPA is perfectly bitter with a refreshing, sublime finish. I'd say that is a pretty accurate description. I don't know about the sublime aspect. I don't know what sublime tastes like. When I'm looking for something a little more hoppy on the IPA side, um, this would be a decent go-to. I could see myself drinking this somewhat socially, probably be at the two or three limit with this one max before I switch it up to something else but it does have a pretty refreshing flavor overall. Again, Voodoo Ranger by New Belgium. And right away, guys, here, we've got House of the Dead Overkill. It's only right that we start with the House of the Dead series. These are fantastic games, great shooters. Uh, they translate well to the Wii format, and they work really well, very responsive to the light gun. Of course, House of the Dead Overkill is a little bit more for the mature audience, whereas House of the Dead 2 and 3 uh, are more family-friendly, I guess you could say, if zombies and blood are family-friendly in any regard. But 2 is probably the most challenging of all three of them. 3 right after that, and then, of course, Overkill is a bit of a breeze. Next up, we have Gunslingers. This is a very unique shooter in the fact that uh, it uses that kind of block-style art. It's a Western-style shooter it's a lot of fun to play a lot of different turning it does have some repeated sequences throughout now uh, some of the animations and stuff that they make you watch are you know sort of repeated <laughs> time and time again so that gets a little drab uh, but for the most part it's a lot of fun and a lot of different things going on then of course there's the arcade hits pack that features gunblade new york and la machine guns this is an absolute blast. If you're looking for the arcade nostalgia, it gets no better than this. This is one of those shooters that requires no reloading. You basically just hold the trigger down and let her rip. You're zipping all over the place, basically shooting up crap everywhere you go. There's no storyline, no explanation, just lots of dead bodies, bullets flying, and this thing is a ton of fun. Then, of course, there's Ghost Squad, which is actually one of my personal favorites. My only real gripe with this is that it's shorter, um, and then, of course, it's tons of fun as well. You got guys diving in front of the camera, and some of the acting and voiceovers is kind of bad, but this is really a ton of fun. The reload feature is exactly like you would expect it to be in the arcade format, and it'll truly remind you of your days at the arcade. Then a title not a lot of people know as much about is Sin and Punishment. Man, this thing is a freaking blast. Now, it does have the third-person sort of perspective in the fact that you can see the character, but if you notice, it actually does feature the moving crosshairs. So if you don't really necessarily pay attention to her, then it basically functions just like your standard shooter. But this thing is high-flying, super fast-paced, and actually very, very challenging. Now, when it comes to the Resident Evil series, these are games that are probably not true rail shooters, um, but you can get that experience. You can actually disable the nunchuck, which makes it more like an arcade-style shooter. But this is still a great addition to your collection just because the Resident Evil series is super popular. Umbrella Chronicles is not quite as good as Dark Side Chronicles in the storyline aspect, but still great overall. Dead Space Extraction is a fantastic shooter with a really great storyline. It's tons of fun if you're into like strange creatures and kind of the whole space zombies, uh, you know, type of feel. Um, tons of fun again. It's a really fun shooter. 
And then, what can we say? Target Terror is a freaking classic if ever there was one. This, my friends, is just like being 15 all over again. You've got the real-life actors there over the CGI backdrop. Tons of stuff going on. Plenty of blood, bad acting, bad voiceovers. The standard reshoot functions. This game is just designed uh, to fully fulfill that, that nostalgia that we're all deeply in search of when it comes to rail shooters. So they do have some repeated actors uh, sequences here, like the guy crawling across the floor. You'll see him several times. But yo, two thumbs up to Target Terror. Now, Mad Dog McCree is one of those ones that, you know, you either love it or you hate it. I mean, if you enjoy super cheesy, really bad acting, this thing was all shot live action, which does give it a unique feel, and it's unlike any other game you'll play as a shooter. But, um, you know, it's really just not my cup of tea. But I definitely recommend you check it out if you never have. Heavy Fire Afghanistan. This is a scarcely talked about rail shooter for the Wii. It's a super fun game. It's very serious, but it's very long. Really great gunplay on this one. Very responsive game. It's good stuff. Now, Reload, on the other hand, is uh, set up a little bit more to be in the target practice type of zone. But, man, it's a lot of fun. You get these sort of, you know, cardboard cutout guys popping up. And you got victims. And then, of course, you have uh, enemies as well. So you want to make sure you shoot the right people and don't shoot the wrong people. And then, of course, you have a number of different targets and things like that throughout as well. It's a lot of fun to play. Um, and definitely worth checking out. And guys, there's a lot going on in this episode, so I'm going to keep the comic of the day short this time. I'm going to give you a full-on graphic novel, The House of M. This is an incredible read. If you're into comics, you like the Avengers, you like X-Men, you like pretty much anything in that Silver Age era of Marvel comics, this is going to be a great read for you. This is a full-on collection, the entire storyline, uh, and sort of like a what-if type of Parable. Essentially what you have is Scarlet Witch who is manipulating her powers. She is creating alternate realities where she has kids and things like that. And Xavier, Professor X, has to constantly remind her, look, you've got to stop. You're going to change the course of reality as we know it. And she's beating herself up. She gives herself kids and then she basically has to end that reality and quote unquote kill those kids. And it's just too much for her to bear. So basically, as she starts to lose a grasp of what's real and what's fake because she's so consumed by these fantasies, um, the X-Men, Avengers, etc. are meeting up saying, what are we going to do about this? And then of course, Magneto loses his crap. He's wanting to protect his daughter. He doesn't really know what's going on. So when it's all said and done... Um, it turns into a scenario where she creates a new version of reality where the Professor X Xavier School for the Gifted is actually run by Magneto himself. So it's the House of M. And man, you talk about a significant uh, twist uh, on the events of pretty much every life in Marvel Comics. At that point, it's a completely different version of reality. Stuff gets crazy. No spoilers there, but do yourself a huge favor and check out House of M. M today. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. As always, like, share, and subscribe. Till next time.